Software testing and software evolution are the two parts of module 4. Let's see one by one. In software testing, uh, it means that testing the software. Why do we need software testing? Because uh, one of the reasons is to satisfy the customer. We'll test the product and show and the customer agrees to buy it or not. Then to find the errors, we'll test the system and uh, if we get some errors, we can correct it. Okay. So these are two things. First one is to satisfy the customer and second is to find the errors. Development testing means we have to develop any product here, suppose a device, so we'll check in three ways, okay. While development, we'll test it, if it uh, if the glass is hard or not, that's unit testing. And we will embed this glass with the phone and check if it the touch screen is working or not, that is component testing. And thirdly, we'll embed the software also in it and check the whole device is working or not, that is known as system testing. Test driven development means while the code is being developed we will develop a small amount of code and we will check if it is right or not if it is right we will continue to develop it so what's the advantage is that while developing only we will check all the snippets of the code so we need not check again the whole code okay at final that's the advantage of test driven development release testing means when a product is developed it is done by a separate team the release testing it tests three things first requirements test whether the product meets all the requirements and scenario test whether the product is capable of working in an environment like this and performance test how well the product performs and user testing means the product is given to the user there are three types first one is alpha testing alpha testing means users work with the developers to find the errors in it and beta testing beta testing is for normal people they can also test it and acceptance testing means it is given to the customers to check if the product can be released to the public or not let's focus on this one okay this one is important here i will give you a trick to uh, remember the stages of the acceptance testing see remember this sentence don't purposely drive on new road suppose you have to show your skills of driving to someone else like you need to be accepted by the other person for your driving skills don't purposely drive on a new road because it's more likely that on a new road you might commit some mistakes okay so now uh, what's the connection first take the first letter of the first word of the sentence don't and remember d define means what is the criteria for acceptance testing what is the criteria to accept if the product is good or not that's the first word second word take purposely purposely p for plan what path you will follow after defining the acceptance criteria what path you will follow to make the product work in a good way that is plan third drive in drive you can remember d and r drive uh, derive and run tests Mean, uh, means after uh, making a product, you have to derive some tests for it and run the tests on it to show the customer that it is working. Third one is new road. New road you can uh, remember as negotiate, reject or accept. After building the product, you can negotiate with the customer and uh, he can reject or accept your product. In that way, you can explain this uh, whole things by keeping in mind the following sentence. Don't purposely drive on new road. Okay. Test automation is a small, small snippet of code which will test the product at, as it is being developed automatically. Now the first thing was over. Now coming to the software evolution, we have uh, evolution as if a change is seen, if any change is seen in the software, what we have to do, we have to propose a solution to it and then it will get ev evolved. That is known as software evolution. Now there are some dynamics of software evolution and this is very important, Lehman and ba uh, Belladis laws. Okay, first law is change is inevitable. Okay, I have a trick for remembering this as well. So uh, keep listening. First law is change is inevitable means whatever change is happening in the product, it is inevitable because um, all time the changes are happening in the environment and the system. Second law, keep it simple. If change happens, if you make the product adapt to it, don't make the product more complicated. Keep it simple. Change should be constant. It should not bring a large amount of change which can't be accepted by the users and it should not change very slowly also. It should go within the pace and should be constant. Seventh law is feedback should be there. Whatever the product you are updating, the feedback should be considered. That, uh, then only you can develop effectively. Now the trick uh, in which you can remember, uh, remember all these laws is Remember this sentence, lion is in circus and forest, okay. See, L, you can remember this. 
is i and s inevitable and simple is and c uh, remember this c circus and f feedback okay a lion is in circus and forest okay so in that we can remember all these laws and uh, read the notes so that you can expand these laws accordingly now coming to software maintenance it has three parts fault if any fault is there you need to maintain the software and environment if environment is changing you need to maintain the software and some new functionality is to be added then you have to maintain the software now this is one important question changes in development are easier than maintenance okay means if you are developing something at that time you change something that is more easier than if it is developed and you need to maintain it and some make some changes that is more harder now let's see why because maintenance team does not know the technical terms there is a development team separate and maintenance team separate development team will develop and give the product to maintenance team they don't know the technical terms of the product so it's hard for them to make changes to it secondly changing the program after uh, finishing is harder while all the work is done after uh, having all the work done making change is a hard making change is hard process now you can uh, see some uh, connections like how much the product is connected to the environment in that way you should maintain more if more it is connected to the environment you have to put in more maintenance if some slight changes happen it will affect all of this right so you need to maintain more secondly how much the environment is changing that much you need to maintain okay these are the two factors software engineering means using modern codes means if there is a uh, old product okay and you have to make it more effective so the concept will be same in the product just change the codes by using uh, modern languages then it will be uh, called as software engineering another thing structure improvement means the structure of the whole code make it more um, simple and more effective second is redundancy if any code is getting copied again and again you can uh, type an effective code within a small within lesser amount of code lines then using functions and objects by using functions and objects you can uh, reduce the redundancy if some uh, for example if there is something to add okay you will write a plus b again b plus c again c plus d instead of that you can call the add function instead of separate name roll number you can have all those things in one object like id card now uh, this is very important topic legacy system management in that you have four partitions now lq lb q means business uh, quality and b means business value lq and lb means low quality low business value if any product is there which is having low quality and low business value you should stop using it and secondly if it is of low quality but high business value then you have to replace that product see it is of low quality right if you uh, but it is giving high business value so replace it and uh, make it of high quality so that uh, high business value can be maintained now if a product is there having high quality and high business value then re-engineer it to maintain it keep maintaining it then the last one it's having high quality but low business value so uh, regular maintenance should suffice now coming to the fifth uh, fifth module you have project planning project planning means distributing this whole project to a set of people okay that is known as project planning how much pricing will be there means what will be the price it depends on three things market what is the market value of the product and what's the quality you have produced and the maximum price which the customer is willing to pay based on these three factors the price will be set and uh, coming to plan driven development see in plan driven development you will have a product uh, in your mind to make what you will allocate all the resources you need then you will schedule the time for it and then you will uh, feedback it means uh, after scheduling the time you will have the feedback like how it is going like all that feedback based on that you will develop more effectively that is known as plan driven development okay you can expand each of these steps in your own words project scheduling means when the project should be done so you can have two things task a and task b okay if task a and task b are there you can uh, overlap if it is possible at the same time the task a is going on uh, if task b can also start at the same time before a gets over that time you can do and uh, that will um, save your time and what sequence to follow so that uh, the project will be finished fastest that's also important estimation techniques means how much price will be uh, therefore um, 
making a project okay that's one by experience first one by experience you can know if a particular project is there how much time it might take second is by algorithm means some formulas that formulas are based on some previous projects how much it were built in time uh, considering all those data they have built some formulas in this model it is nothing but a formula based on the previous projects which have been built so there are four types okay it uh, it's a formula and uh, it depends on the software type there are four types first one is application type means if the product is being developed by using the existing components that is application type it has one formula and early model early model means the product is being developed but before that product you need some information right how much uh, the time will be required and how much money will be spent and how much people will be required efforts and all that formulas are based on this early model and reuse model means some product is already there you need to just update it how much money will be required post architectural uh, means all things you have been given information is given like person everything uh, how much time it will take everything will be given you have to calculate the cost now quality management means um, there is a product and you have to maintain the quality of it now how do we do it first consider this product here and suppose it is 98 percent good and working okay just two percent it is not working so that two percent will be it's okay it's no problem because it's very hard to develop 100 percent quality product so that your uh, two percent is uh, often overlooked in software quality it's accepted then there's a qa team qa team what it will do it will check the documents of the software it will ask the questions and the uh, non-functional attributes means how interesting is the product and those questions will be asked by qa team and they will inspect all those things this is a great difference between review and inspection in review you will check the documents in uh, if the software document is meeting its standards and all those things which are mentioned is available in the product or not in inspection what you will do you will find some bugs or errors in the system software measurement and metrics in measurement what does measurement mean measurement means uh, attributing some numeric value to a product okay how much good is the product how much effective and all that one numeric value is assigned that is known as measurement metric means if there is a large amount of code okay that same uh, code what it does can be done in, even in three lines so that is measured by metrics and coming to software standards you will have some set of rules here which you need to include in your product then only it could be called as a quality product it has some rules are there for product as well as for process we, if they follow uh, those rules their process could be called as better process and similarly for product also now ISO 9001 standards framework it's not a set of rules but it has some um, facts written by using which you can uh, develop the um, custom code for your own company okay like some many companies are there they can develop this own codes means uh, our standards are this our standards are this like that they can own develop but it should not contradict to what is iso 9001 standards framework okay it is not providing one complete set of rules but it is providing some guidelines by using which company can produce its own set of rules okay but uh, one thing to be noted that it does not assure quality means iso 9001 standards framework it just says the standards which is to be followed quality all depends on how effective the company works okay it just confirms the standards it does not assure the quality of the product okay